Today I'm gonna talk about light. Why I wanna talk about light first? Well, light is the raw material for photographs. Without any light you're not gonna be able to take any pictures. A painter needs to understand his paint in order to produce a painting. The potter needs to understand his clay to make up a pot. So light is, is your raw material as a photographer. Without understanding how that works, you're not gonna be able to control the results. So today I'm gonna talk about what light is. I'm gonna try to give it a definition, three examples and uh, a few classifications, what type, what type of lights are out there and how we can use that on our advantage. Without further ado, let's start. Light. What is light? Best way to understand light is through visualization of what, what is light and how it travels in space. Light is coming from a variety of sources and it, it's all around us. It comes from any object or matter that transmits energy like the sun, fire, melted metal, volcano lava or man-made like light bulbs or light torches or candles, even your phone these days. Light is everywhere and without light, life is not possible. Trying to explain this as simple as possible, light is a combination of electromagnetic waves and particles called photons. Photons are emitted by the light source in large numbers and they travel through space until they hit, an, they hit an object. They are traveling in a flow, just like rain, but they travel from the source in all directions, not just one direction like the rain falls from the sky down. They travel as a flow, but in waves, just like the water waves in a lake when you, 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 you throw a rock and you can see those circles. But the waves are spherical, not just in one place, uh, not not just in one plane. Uh, there are also light travels in one direction uh, just like the rain but these are lasers and we're not gonna get into that. Coming back these photons are uh, transmitted by the light source in huge numbers until until they hit an object or a surface and they bounce. Now, they, now here's the thing they bounce back in all directions spreading again in space spherical again this is not like the ball bouncing on a surface as you might be used to visualize as light is a big number of particles as each photon hits the surface and jumps into a different angle with a different energy in a different uh, uh, organized in different waves trying to picture that the surface of an object is actually not a flat but each individual atom is an entity that has a shape not sure because uh, I'm not a physicist but I would try to represent it with few balls Photons are very small in comparison with these atoms and they come in large numbers and they jump, back, they jump back in all directions. This is called reflection. These photons are going in all directions and they hit another object and jump again. We receive many of these photons from everywhere all around us and these photons penetrate our eyes and hit the back of, of our eyes and they are forming the image and our brain interprets that. And this is the subject of a new tutorial, how that really works. We can classify light depending on the source. We have direct light. Uh, when the light comes from the source direct to the subject with, without any obstacles. Best example is light coming from the sun on a clear day or light coming from a light bulb inside without any restrictions and without any other obstacles. Direct light can produce strong shadows and uh, using direct light needs uh, someone needs to be very careful because strong shadows and high contrast can be disturbing in an image. We can have also indirect light when the light is either reflected by another subject or surface before it reaches the, so before it reaches the, um, the target or is filtered through an obstacle like a cloud, a curtain or both. Most of the time we have a combination of both as the whole world around us reflects lights in all directions all the time. We can classify the light in relation to quality. We have hard light or harsh or whatever you want to call it when you have strong when you see shadows in most of the cases direct light produces shadows but shadows can be produced also by indirect light as well if there's a shadow then we have a contrast the smaller the light source in comparison with the subject the stronger the shadow also remember 
the stronger the light, the stronger the contrast. In photography, strong contrasts are to be avoided as they create uh, images that can be disturbing or create too much detail. That's not always the case, sometimes the shadow is with intention. Also we have soft light. We have soft light when the shadows are very soft or non-existent. This is a result of a large uh, source of light in comparison with the subject. It could be like a soft box or like a blanket of clouds over the sky. Light properties. We have strength of life or light level. The number of particles gives the level of lighting. The more particles are traveling, the stronger the light is. More raindrops falling, the stronger the rain, so the faster you're gonna get wet. Just for our purposes, this is a simple classification of light levels, just an average for the human naked eye being able to capture. We're gonna keep this very simple. So the strongest light that we can have is probably the full sun in the mountains where there's snow. The snow is very highly reflective. A big percentage of the light uh, from the sun is reflected all around. This light is so strong people need sunglasses to be able to cope. Also we can consider very strong light also on the beach and on a clear sky. We can also a, uh, have a high level of light, not as strong as in the mountains or on the beach just a full sun outdoors in the middle of the day. An average level of lighting like a normal day in the morning afternoon or where vision is just normal you do not need anything to be able to see clearly or indoors depending how many lamps are on in your room. There would be just a normal level. Also low level of lighting we can consider low level lighting in early mornings late evenings before sunrise or after sunset or indoor when there's not enough light for you to see clearly or dark if there's no light you can't see that's the lowest level of lighting level of light can be measured with light meters in order to know how one can set up the photographic equipment but this is a subject to a different chapter we can also classify light depending on the temperature the light doesn't have a temperature, it does have just a, uh, a warmth or a cold feeling. Humans can see a large number of colors. Light colors are given by the uh, uh, frequency of light or the property of the object they fall onto. And it is created by wavelength frequency. We're not going to get into that as it can be very technical. But the only thing we need to remember is that light color sets up the mood in an image. We can have warm light when we, we see a yellow, red, orange feel and gives us a feeling of warmth. If you want to convey that feeling, you can use these colors to your advantage. Or we can have cold light, when the general look is green or blue, and the colors are basically cold colors, conveying a cold feeling. So basically, we have classified light, depending on the source. We have direct light and indirect light, Depending on the quality, we have hard light and soft light. And uh, depending on properties, we have low, uh, low light, medium light or strong light. And also depending on temperature or color, we have warm light or cold light. I think this is the most complicated as we can consider. More than this is getting too technical. And just remember this and you will be able to control these uh, things for uh, for your own advantage okay this is an example of the direct light the Sun is um, it's close to midday Sun is high up the sky and very strong the problem with this uh, with this time for taking pictures is that strong light strong shadows strong shadows your subject is good, not gonna like to be in the Sun and they always gonna cramp their face this is uh, not to be done. This is just for illustration purposes. I always try to avoid this time of, uh, of the day to shoot outside. I'm going to show you what, what's the result of, 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 such a, um, um, of such a photograph. I'm going to use my camera settings on auto just for illustration purposes so the camera chooses 
a uh, shutter speed of 250, uh, ISO 100 and the aperture of 5.6. One solution to make a better picture out of it is just using the flash as a fill flash. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn the flash on, put it on ETTL, basically this is the uh, automatic uh, settings for the flash. The flash will pick itself exactly what's the power. The camera picks itself the power, so this is on full automatic, anyone can do it. You will see shortly there is a big difference between using the flash during the day and uh, not using it. Another solution for this will be actually to uh, shoot against the sun. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my uh, mannequin head and then I'm going to put it against the sun on the other side. So I'm going to shoot against the sun. Okay, we have turned the uh, subject with the face uh, on the um, shadow part. So the sun is behind the subject. We're gonna shoot against the sun and you will see that this is fully uh, in shadow and because it's fully in shadow, this uh, light is basically all the reflected light around us. This is a way better picture because we don't have uh, strong shadows on the subject's face. So I'm gonna take a few test shots just on automatic. Just for illustration purposes, I want to use also the field flash to see the difference. Again, full automatic ETTL, it's exposure through the lens, just for people who know what that is. We're going to talk about that uh, later. So I'm going to use the flash now to, see you, to show you the difference. Another solution for this problem shooting in the full full sun is all actually moving the subject into the shade that's a way better option and if I don't have a choice I'm asking all my uh, subjects and including myself to move all of us inside the sun uh, inside the uh, inside the shadow so we don't have the strong light and the strong shadows on the subjects face I'm gonna show you in a second what I mean by that the best choice in case of a full sun outside and strong shadows is actually moving to the shade. Into the shade, what that means, we're not gonna have any direct light from the sun, where everything is gonna be reflected light from everything around us. And you can see all the shadows are very soft and there's no strong shadows to disturb us. I'm gonna take a few test shots and I'm gonna show you my results soon. I'm gonna turn on the field flash just for illustration purposes. There's no really need for field flash in this case because we are all in the shadow and there's no, there's no uh, high contrast to fill in with the, with the flash. Just in conclusion, if you have to shoot in full sun outside, we have direct light strong light, harsh shadows, two, uh, two or three uh, things you can do is use the field flash in if you don't have a choice and there are always instances where you don't have a choice or move against the sun, shoot against the sun, get asked people to actually have the uh, sun at the back of their heads so you can actually uh, catch the, their faces uh, in full shade. It's not gonna be full shade, but it's gonna be a lot of light So I wouldn't be worried about that or move everyone into the shadow and This is the best thing to, to, to do is because in the shadow we have only reflected light indirect light So the shadows are not strong. This is the best picture